What is LOD? In the industry, a lot of people are concerned about what is level of development or level of detail. This question is, has been going around for many, many years now. And a lot of people has a debate on this. A lot of people made a publishing on, on this concern. Today in this video, we'll be covering exactly what LOD means. People perceive LOD in a different way. They don't understand really why we use LOD in the industry. So the, the first question, for example, our clients ask, why do I have to decide on this certain level of detail or certain level of development, depending on which country you are? And they were like saying, how can we really justify it? We are not really expert on this. In the beginning, we were giving them the real references for, for example, from BMBIM forum, and they would download the whole like 250 page of document. And they were like saying, no, I mean, there's no way we can, I can go through all of these documents. And I cannot really understand, I, I need this. I, I, I don't have to really go, I don't have the time to go through all these pages and you know, to give you a clarification what I need exactly. That is a no brainer. We found a way, okay, how can we actually take 250 page document and really simplify it and really put it to, the, to the, our audience, to our prospects, so they can easily see a couple of page document and they can say, okay, that's what I need. You can really see with the images what you're exactly going to get. So LOD is individual components in a BIM model that has a certain level of information, graphical, non-graphical, and documentation. So when you build a digital model, depending on the phase you are in, or else depending on the, uh, the, the needs, for example, you are going to construct this building, obviously, but the client might say, no, I, I just need a graphical representation, or uh, no, I need a construction model that I can actually use to build. So I want quantities and everything, and I want the digital asset, digital information to be correct. So to correctly design in a digital environment, so the contractor can directly copy it. That's why the document is really beneficial, so they can easily see, okay, that's what I need. The different organization in the world publishing content on LOD. And the thing is that a lot of content is differs a lot. So each content is unique on its own. There are different information, different papers. And I will be referring to you one um, reference, uh, Marzia Volpagni, I hope I spelled it correctly. She actually made a paper in Politecnico di Milano, and I will be showing her diagram, which is extracted directly from her presentation. So this diagram represents LOX. There's how many, many organizations publish different papers on uh, LOD and now there are like lots of different opinions. There isn't a one document that states directly that's LOD and these are the details about the LOD. So that's why it's confusing. Every country has its own understanding and their own interpretation about LOD. And then there's another thing in the BIM ISO uh, 19650 document here in the document. Now they change the name. It's not anymore LOD, but according to that document, if you want to fit in their standards, it has to be LOIN, level of information needed. The thing is that since we are changing constantly, maybe after a couple of years, maybe after a decade, it will be really settled down. But right now, a lot of people refer to different things. And as an organization, our, we don't really care about what name we are using at this stage. Obviously, now we started using the, the ISO standards, since it's an international standard. But the most important thing is how the client or prospect actually sees that document. So how they can understand what we exactly need out of that document, what kind of feedback we need. And in the LOD document, you don't have to choose one particular section because there's a, let's put it in the LOD, there's a 200, 300, 350, 400. You don't have to choose 300. And there's a never, you can, you can never find a model that's perfect at 300. There will be some components, there will be 200, some components will be 350, uh, the, some components will be 300, so there will be a lot of things running around in the model. Therefore, you really need to understand that the most important thing and that the purpose should be 300. So the most critical thing for the project objective has to be 300. The rest can play with 200, 350, depending on what you exactly have. So, for example, you can use a manufacturing table that you just downloaded from BIM object, and it's a manuf from manufacturing it's LOD 500 because he did all the details for the, for the table. So, when we come to LOD, there's another level of that as well, which is responsibility matrix. So, there's a level of detail, LOD, and responsibility matrix, which is 
actually highlighting at which stage who is going to tackle what level of information and what level of detail. One of our resources will tackle the column and the column at this stage has to be LOD 200, but this stage should be LOD 300. So we have to really distribute that and it's really difficult. There are lots of components running in the model. It's hard to decide at which stage we really need that information, but we need to have this in place because in the BIM execution plan, when the, to, in order to let the project run smoothly, we need to know when we are going to get that particular element at what level of detail. As I just said, there are lots of, lots of responsibilities going on and it's really hard to agree on terms and the project scope changes and goals change. How do we really alter? How can we make this visible to the all stakeholders? There are very good couple of online platforms. I'm really happy to make a video on those platforms. Please comment below and let us know that you want to learn more about that. And we'll be making videos to run and demonstrate how each platform works. The project scale does not really matter for LOD because in the LOD, for, it's, it's applicable for every project, uh, project scale. So there are other factors that matter when we are having a BIM workflow, depending on the project scale. If you'd like to learn more about how project scale matters with BIM, just click on this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel because every week we are going to publish at least one content for you. Don't forget to turn your notification bell on. See you next time.